Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Calgary Esports League League of Legends Championship Series for week number five. I, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I got. I nailed it this time. Hey! <laughs> Welcome hey. back. Uh, as always, I'm your host, Drew Trackhawk Crawford. Joining me on the desk today is, of course, Jojo Barrientos, aka JB Red Phoenix, in the chat. And we are going to be taking you through week number five, as previously mentioned, mm -hmm. of League of Legends for the championship series for Calgary, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. How are you doing tonight, Jojo? I'm good. That's I decided good to, to put some ears on oh, for this. Oh, cause... Jo joy. <laughs> I'm excited for this. This is so, gonna be so, so you much can, fun. So you can hear better? Oh yeah, totally. You can hear the shot calls from it, everyone else. Something, I'm assuming something, that something. this works, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. You tell me, guys. The, we'll see. So we're gonna be going through, of course, the usual three games. Uh, big kind of event from last week actually was Masters Overrated, of course, was able to secure the fourth uh, game in a row and continue their undefeated streak, but also managed to get into the uh, best of four. So that is kind of a fun little thing. Uh, that was pretty much all that uh, really was big last week. Did you uh, have anything that kind of popped up? Uh, notably for my, like notably for the game in general sense, uh, Teamfight Tactics was released. Oh, very that important. Was very interesting. I actually got to manage to get in a couple of games of that uh, while we managed with a bunch of friends and stuff, so that it was an experience. It's very it was RNG. an experience. It's very RNG based. So is that a good thing? For me, it wasn't. <laughs> Fair I, enough. I did not have fun. Well, because... hopefully the RNG is going to be better as we go into our first game: Bush Town versus Wedge. Ooh, interesting! Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So a uh, couple of things that I personally like to highlight. Uh, of course, the Gnar in the top lane. We saw that uh, debut last week. Yep. Uh, Diana in the jungle did catch me off guard, but then we saw uh, some of the patch note changes that kind mm. of, I don't want to say hit Sejuani, but I mean. I don't think they will hurt her as bad as people no, think it No, no. I think that Sejuani is going to maintain her dominance pretty easily. Like this is a this is a switch very good Sizwani meta. This is almost exactly what she wants here. The one thing I'd take and mention is that in for Wedge, still taking the top lane Kench here. Even though these the changes, changes yeah. in 914. So. Yeah, they definitely changed up his kit a little bit. A little bit less damage and definitely less damage off of hitting spells with his passive up, so yeah. uh, big changes there. That being said, he is still a lane bully, so I do expect things to come through. Yumi for... I believe this is the first time we've seen Yumi come through. Uh, since, for, since her release. Yeah, pretty much for at least this series. She's a pain to play against, let me tell you. Uh, here's a here's my catch-22. In the in laning phase, it's a 2v1 matchup for yourself. If you're against facing against a Yumi, just focus that AD carry harder than normal. Agreed. Uh, but notable include here for Bushtown. For Bushtown? Scion support. Not as surprising for me personally. Uh, Scion support is well known for being part of a kill lane. Uh, so I'm not as surprised, especially since they have a Kai'Sa. Uh, so definitely going for those all-ins. Uh, he basically hides in the bush, tries to hit with invisible cues, and then they follow up. So uh, fair. probably would have seen it paired more with a Caitlyn or something that can harass. But yep. Kai'Sa is very strong, so not too surprised there. So ready to get into game number one? Yep. All right, going into game number one. Bushtown versus Wedge. Versus which? All right, welcome back to the lit rift. <laughs> the lift, yeah. The rift, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, as we go into game number one Bushtown versus Wedge. Two teams who unfortunately haven't seen too much success in the last little while. Yeah. Uh, Bushtown, I think, has gone... Uh-oh, Sign's going in. Uh, of course he's going in, but Yui's able to spot him out. Get the Q off, get the slow. Just gonna get some deep vision for now, but Ward not able to be taken out, so... Wedge will know if they try for any late invades. Meanwhile, Nar spots out the Sejuani, so that they, they know that she's gonna be starting on the red side. Pretty basic stuff, as we see the line of scribbage be completely set. Pretty much... 
nothing out of the ordinary right now. No, it both t uh, both junglers are going to be going starting on the red side this time around. That means that Bush Sejuani might oh, go for she the... she recalled, though. So she's actually going to be starting blue. Oh, that's interesting. She might be pathing top, then. Yeah, I could see that, especially with the Tom Kench. Yeah. Uh, Tom Kench will potentially get bullied just to do the range advantage. Uh, the, the one thing I'd definitely say playing against a Nar, you do have that... Nar does have a little bit more range advantage over Tom Kench in this case because of that Q poke. Agreed. Uh, Q poke as well as just autos in his mini form. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. A very good leash. Diana is going to be off to a very quick start. And we see on the other side, the Winter's Bite comes in and takes a bite out of blue buff. Interestingly, Diana going straight to the Raptors here, so he might do a transition game. It's a it's a pretty easy clear for her, and yeah, yeah. it does give her uh, the potential for a level two gank if Rise starts pushing in on the Cho'Gath, which, to be fair, no, she's just going through a full bot side clear. So she might be trying to come around this bot side. I'm gonna definitely say that if Diana goes for the goes to from Raptors to Krugs, it might lead into a Scuttle Crab. Possibly bot side gank. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Definitely want to take Skull of Control for the kill lane so that uh, Kaisa and Choget, or uh, sorry, Scion, are going to be able to yeah. play as aggressively as they really want to. Yeah, you can see that as, as both Scion and Kaisa are setting up for the setting up here. Says Diana's one taking the red buff. Scion is not too far, but she is recalling, so this will be very interesting. Early recall. Uh, she hasn't taken Predator by the looks of it, so. No need for the early boots, but maybe just wants to get some extra clear. Try and harass the Sejuani. Mm, you know, it's going to be very interesting now with the both Zaya and Yumi under getting Bush Town basically under tower here. Zion's going to have to make some moves if he's going to have to try and turn this around now. AP Yumi is annoying because you just get this free homing missile hit. Mm -hmm. And as you can so, see, ooh, very nice. Stun onto the Kaisa's. She pulls back the feathers and he's able to get a very good trade. Almost takes down Kaisa, but the heal comes through and UB is not in range to pop the ignite. So unfortunately, first blood does not go over. As the Tom Kench is looking for the Gnar, a bit of an interesting trade as Sejuani is here as well. They're Diana and Cho'Gath all come through a nice double knockup. He's going to secure first blood for the Cho'Gath. Meanwhile, Chalm Kench is going to be trying to get a little bit more damage in there. Shield and the Ray Health is not enough as Rise is now the single target. A little bit low from the man. And he does flash forward to try and get the extra damage, but it is too little too late. J Trigga is able to secure the third kill and a 3 for O on the side of Bushtown. An absolutely brilliant start despite their losing bot lane. Uh, it looks like... And Church. another pop through and beautiful Saucy Meat is able to get a gorgeous follow-up and completely take down the Kai'Sa. Heals down, Ignite, not even needed. Beautiful play there for Yumi, just knowing that the heal was already down. Makes up basically a turn turnaround play to make, to make that uh, easy, easy kill. Very easy kill, agreed. We do see about a uh, 600 gold lead for the side of Bushtown as Scion, double ignite is down. Looks like Yumi is going to be able to get out with the heal and the E to get her directly onto the waiting Zaya. Two birds of a feather do flock together as Cho'Gath is going hard for this. Diane is not going to be able in time, doesn't have the flash. Use that in the previous gauge. The knockup is good, but it looks like the rise is not able to get the final damage as Sejuani is chasing down. A it's going to be an easy double kill as the Yumi pops in, and there's the first kill. Second kill easily picked up by the Flail, and an easy answering back. 3-4 to four for the side of Wedge now. Good job on Wedge on, on that Yumi to start roaming up mid side to make sure that she can get that extra play on there. Now, I'm gonna, now they're gonna have, Wedge is going to have to try and basically take this lead and start snowballing. Absolutely, and you already see it. It's around a 1,000 gold lead right now. So with those kills, they're getting a nice, well, just answering in terms of gold. The Scion and the Kaisa are getting absolutely bullied by the Zaya as she takes down the Kaisa, flashes off to the side, and it flash is down, but it looks like it does not matter as the Flail pops through. Winter's Bite is able to take a bite out of Scion, and his Enrage does not even come close to getting the Zaya. Well, I say close, but she was one hit away. 
Eh, usually one hit is usually enough, but in this case, nope, Cyan, too little, too late. Well, no, we've talked about Peregrine. Uh, he's been a very consistent player for the side of uh, Wedge, and really asserting his dominance in the bot lane. Agreed. Normally you would expect the Scion and the Kai'Sa to be a little bit more aggressive, but Sejuani is going to try and clear out there. Puts the flail over the corner, but is not able to get more than just an answering as Rai starts to do a little bit more damage to the Cho'Gath. Cho'Gath, of course, building up a little bit more tanky than you might see in your conventional mid laners, but it doesn't really matter. Yumi's getting a little bit of trash, but Sejuani gets a great series of attacks down on the Cho'Gath, but unfortunately there's just no follow-up damage from the Rise. The Winter's Bite is used, the Arctic Assault is used, but everything but the ultimate is committed, but unfortunately it's just too little too late as these Yumi's, I want to call them homing missiles, just continue That's, They're basically to tear what down. they are. There's the ult committed as, not too surprised there, unfortunately. Sion was a little bit outside of position. Popping the ultimate might seem a little bit excessive there, but yeah. she knew that if the Q landed, it might be uh, warrant for an all-in. Can we consider a Yumi as the AP carry here instead of the Zaya? <laughs> because that, that was two kills You mean the AD Yumi. carry. Yeah, you, Yumi sitting there with 4 and 0. Oh. So <laughs> Yumi I, I is the carry. I want to AP carry because she's not going AD. At Look all. at me. I am the carry now. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're going to have to contend with Ryze, because Ryze also is sitting at uh, two assists. And Sejuani is also doing some good damage as a very good erupt pops through. Cho'Gath is definitely hurting. We see the Catalyst completed on him. He's probably going to be trying to get that Rod of Ages up very quickly. Yeah, the sooner you get that up, the better. Yeah, an early, very early Rod of Ages is going to make this Cho'Gath very tanky. And on top of that, very... Very much damage. Looks like the Sion and the Zai or the Kaiser are gonna try and go down the Zai. Does get the knock up, all the damage popping through, and Sir Nibbles, unfortunately, is gonna be taking uh, a very good nibble outside of the bot lane. Tom Kench is gonna be coming in the bottom end. Very good collapse. The Sion is gonna go down. Meanwhile, Sejuani is able to chase Ooh, off just, the Kaisa. Really. Yumi is potentially going to clean up the Kai'Sa, but no, it looks like she might actually be able to get the Execute off. No one's in range, and yes, a perfect Execute. Kai'Sa able to save, get the one kill, and get out without giving back anything. Four to seven for the side of Wedge now. We're looking at about a uh, two, just under 2,000 gold lead for them. Smart play by Kai'Sa. She, know, she knows that recall timer that's going to be really, very really quick still in this early game, so it would just be easier than just recalling your... Going Absolutely, but that does give priority of the Infernal Dragon over to Wedge. And so they are going to be able to convert this into a little bit of a Dragon lead. And Infernal Dragon is arguably my favorite just due to the, well, it, it just gives damage. It's no, oh, you need to get structures, you need to be out of combat movements. No, 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 no. This is pure unadulterated damage to anything. That's, that's a lot of damage, man. That's a lot of damage, man. I love the way that... Oh, oh beautiful, beautiful root. I, I was just about to say, I love the way the Zaya is setting up her double feathers up to the side where she knows. Nice ultimate as well. Getting the root onto the side as well. A good flash over is able to keep him alive for now. Yumi is not able to get the final homing missing off. So unfortunately, they're not able to get the kill there. But a great play there. And it looks like that's going to gift them the first tower of the game. Bot tier one. Oh, oh good. Blizzard on top of book. We see the two double Bs coming through. And <laughs> Sion is not able to get anything done. Not even able to save the tower. Both ultimates committed. Oh, Diana trying to see if he can make a play here. Cho'Gath getting, getting rooted a little bit. Trying to... As he's going to have to piece it out. Oh, is he going to be able to clean up here? No chance. Church of Backers getting taken to church this time around. Definitely. Take me to church, sir, because, uh, well, <laughs> unfortunately he's going to need a little bit more than faith to try and win this game. He's getting bullied around just a little bit, but the rest of his team is definitely making up for it. Oh, Diana just watching the wings. Oh, no, it doesn't look like not? they're able to get a collapse, and honestly, they still have mid-tier one, so frankly speaking, there wasn't really too much of a concern there. 
Now with the Yumi in the mix. Teleport, teleport is committed from the side of Rise. Slow is onto Diana. Cho'Gath is able to land their erupt, but the ultimate is committed by Rise. Looks like they're going to be going in. Only Rise is there, though, so it doesn't look like they're going to be able to commit a full turn erupt as it gets turned immediately around on him. Oh, Kha'Zix no. is able to pick up the first kill. Sejuani is going in for the burning Diana, but it too little too late as the shutdown goes over to the ward's side of Cho'Gath. Zai is in there and beautiful triple root there. Doesn't look like the, oh, able to get the Megadar off and able to get the ultimate, but it's too little too late. The ultimate and the stun committed from Yumi and a very good turnaround there. A two for three, not quite the decisive fight that Wedge was maybe looking for, but a win nonetheless. It's going to be pretty big on Wedge's part, but then we are going to be training that for possibly the bot tower here. Bot tier one versus top tier one, so it does look like a trade of turret. Tempo advantage, if there is any minions left in the bot side, which I don't think there is going to be, may go the side of Bushtown, so they might be able to get a little bit more off. Uh, Are they not, even able yeah, to get the first turret? next wave is coming in for Bushtown, but Wedge already has them under tower. They, no, they don't have enough damage yet. That is so sad for the side of Bushtown. Unlucky. Wedge, little too much damage, and unfortunately they might not even... No, they'll be able to get the bot tier 1. Uh, unless Diana has something to say here. No, nah, teleports have been used. I Tom Kench ultimate isn't going to be up in time to get that down, so... It does look like Butch Town trades for the top tier one, but the Rift Herald is in there as Cho'Gath is pointing around. The Sejuani is charging in, and a very good pull onto the side of Zaya. She flashes back across and is able to get a huge amount of damage. Diana drives onto her, but she's not able to get enough damage across as the Cho'Gath puts down enough damage alongside the Nar to get that in. Megadar is up and and it looks like Flash is going to be able to get him away. Sejuani is chasing over the wall, but it's too little too late for the side of Nar as he gets blasted down, flailed to death, and unfortunately Cho'Gath is just going to have to limp away and lick his wounds. Oof, not what, not what Bushtown was hoping for and looked while this Cho'Gath is running. Exactly what you led, exactly what they needed, and they were needed to fight off this this wa basically wave of attack and secure the Drift Herald in this case. Shelly's gonna be popped out and put, put easy in tier the one charge. Tier one turret is that's, I would assume going down three. Diane three is here. Looks like they're able to get a nice lock onto Yumi. Takes her down immediately. Yumi, of course, uh, one of the squishiest support champions minus Sona, but uh, not too much of a difference between the two of them as they both mm. pop. I say there is a difference only because Sona can scale. But that's, that's the major thing. Is Yumi, even though you have that passive and you have that ability to lock on the Oh, on misses the charge. Diana does get a proc down onto Sejuani, so she could dive in, but it looks like they're gonna back off now. Uh, Mid tier one, safe for now as three people rotate. Kaisa is gonna be taking out the red buff. We might see, are they fighting? Yeah, for the second infernal dragon. So the second infernal dragon is a sign of contention as Zaya is just putting damage down onto the sign. Quarter health, half health down. He's not going to be able to heal up. He, if he charges in, he might just get bursted down before he has a chance to do anything. More damage as they keep doing more and more, but a very good Q. A nice lockup for the side of Bushtown, but it doesn't look like they have enough damage to follow it through. The Scion goes down. A nice recall, but not able to get the stun or root onto anyone. And the Scion and Diana are both down for the side of Bushtown, giving Wedge an easy secure on this Infernal. That's a 2v1 for Wedge. It's a good trade in this case, but it looks like Kais is trying to make some moves to see if he can make that steal. Neither team has Smite, so they might be able to get into it. Jogad is not going to get in range for the Feast, and it, the pullback on the Feathers does more than enough to secure the Drake. Second Infernal Drake for the side of Wedge. That is really not good. This is a very going to be a very big snowball now. It looks like a near 4k gold league on the side of Wedge. Plus the two. <laughs> Oh, bad choice there, Cho'Gath. You do not want to be fighting this birdie. Bird is the word in this is this game, and unfortunately, Zaya is putting her stamp. Oh, damage is... after damage. Essence Reaver completed, i.e. no doubt on the way as she goes to town on this tier one turret. Gets stunned up, gets locked down, but it's, it doesn't matter. Diana might be there on the side, but able to ult away. Gets the ignite and the kill. 
The homing missile is there on Diana, but she's going to be flashing away. Rise is going to get beaten up by the Scion, but it just doesn't matter. Oh, as the perfect time. That's the perfect timing. On the ultimate end, is able to clean up Diana, and they're able to get a little bit more damage onto the tier 2 mid. We were hoping for a kill lane from Bushtown. It looks like it doesn't seem the like... The kill lane was Wedge all along. <laughs> Who knew, right? Oh my goodness. Yumi, my goodness. That is some serious damage. I mean, full AP Yumi is the bane of my existence. She's... Gnar versus the... That's some serious... She's stacking, Yeah, that's dude. Magi's. As Gnar is getting wailed on in the top oh. lane... Epix is going to be taking it down as Kai'Sa tries to take down this very tanky Tom Kench. Tom Kench in the bot lane is able to get enough work done for the side of Wedge that they can push in and take mid lane number two as a nice stun onto the rise. Just not able to get anything done. Diana goes down for the count. Sion goes down again. One and seven. We see the Kai'Sa able to pick up a kill on the back side of this fight while the Yumi is just still floating around, trying to get those stuns out, trying to clear out the damage. A nice ultimate on the side of there, and cleaning up the Cho'Gath as we are just seeing a complete annihilation of Bushtown. Wedge putting a stamp of authority on this game. They don't want any contention. Yeah, no, Wedge is basically taking this game. The only problem is with Bushtown, looks like they basically Jackie Chandel. All of their players in okay. one shot. They, they they haven't won it yet. They're only six, seven thousand gold ahead. Mm -hmm. There's of course the Kaisa, which scales ridiculously well. Cho'Gath, which scales ridiculously well. Diana, yeah. which scales ridiculously well. And Nar, which if you can play around it, is definitely going to do enough. Yeah. Plus, Sion is a super tank, no matter what. So he just needs some gold to get items. So there is a world where Bushtown pulls. The EU, like season two EU strat of holding out until 40 minutes, yeah. where the gold lead doesn't matter. I I want to agree with you here, but if Wedge puts the puts too hard of a stamp on it, I don't think that Bushnell will have a chance. And with a vet Zaya, and w now with Infinity Edge, and now building into yeah. building Zeal item, my chances are slim for the. For they the have to Bush pick off the Zaya. The Zaya is 10 and two. She holds the majority of the gold for Wedge in yeah. terms of combat stats. Nar, not the where you want to be. Doesn't have the, I was going to say doesn't have the jump to get out, but then Zaya just chunks him down with two autos. So, yeah, this Zaya is kind of fed. Oh, oh don't get too don't close. Get... A beautiful series of auto attacks plus the stun. Able to get an easy two, three kills onto the Zaya as she's just... Wow. Uh, Just taking Bush, over this game. Bushtown, I'm sorry, but this Zaya is basically your demise now. Yeah. Bird is uh -oh, definitely okay. now the word. Sion is going to go in, try and get a little bit of damage and a little bit of stun, but I mean... You can't 3v1, my You dude. can't 3v1, dude, and unfortunately, the Zaya is just going to tear three. Resistances or not. Both inhib turrets going down roughly right after the other. Inhib's Potentially to follow. Yeah, no, this is definitely top and mid in here going down for sure. As I have taken quick work with no, with very with little no issue. help, <laughs> no help. She doesn't need it. Dude. Bot lane is down for the side of Bushtown. It's three v five. We're looking at nineteen minutes. We have had a sub twenty minute game. This would be the second sub 20 minute game if they're able to close it out but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to get in time uh, Megadar is charging there is able to get a flash oh, ultimate but it's not in the correct direction as the ultimate from Yumi comes through Book is basically keeping Yumi alive as the dash onto Diana is not able to do anything the very good erupt onto the Zaya is able to catch her out a little bit but she is just being kept perfectly safe by this tanky tanky front line the yeah. front line is basically the bouncers of the club saying, uh, no, not gonna happen. <laughs> oh, Zaya shreds goodness. through Kaisa, ignite onto her, and she is still up for the count. 16 and 2. This wasn't Bushtown versus Wedge. This was Bushtown versus Peregrine, and unfortunately, the bird came out flapping. So that was game. Really? Because I feel like Bushtown... <laughs>
kind of just Jackie Chan their way out of that. They really did. They just basically went into the game and was like, oh, you, you want to do a kill lane? Well, guess what? <laughs> Yumi Zaya. Let's just go one at a time. The controversial sure. one at a time strat never works. Let it be known, this is a game of full proof. Controversial one at a time strat ain't gonna never work for works. you. Never works for you. But unfortunately, that uh, that is putting a very big mark on Bushtown as mm -hmm. they're gonna have to fight really hard to try and get into the top four. I think that they have three weeks left to turn this around. That being said, I think it's getting to the point that it's a must win for the least two of the three weeks now. Uh, yeah, they would need to win. If my memory serves me correct, they would need to win the next three weeks consecutively. Wow. Six, seven, eight. And even then, they would need to require, I believe, Team Wind to lose all three of those games as well. And right now, Wind's on a pretty... Yeah. Pretty well, we're, we're going to see them coming up uh, pretty quick, so we'll see if their hot streak continues. But for now, we are going to throw it back for a quick intermission while we get the rest of the champions into the pool. We will talk to you guys in just one second. Stick around. These empty thoughts before, but I'm fixed now on the cure. I'm holding on to the last rock on the mountain top, and I'm begging for your love. Do you remember the type of folk we used to be and the simple souls we used to see? Uh huh. Do you remember a fallen man with no escape? It seems he lives in yesterday. Uh huh. You play, play the way when I forgive you once again. Oh, I'm losing patience, and I know for sure that we've been right here before. Oh, I see the dangers, baby. I'm not crying over you. There's no point in lying we're through, 'cause baby, I'm not crying over you. There's just shit that I've gotta do, so I'm not crying. 
Darkness just sleeps away and I'm eager for its break And I'm quite sure Like a human just be self been playing You're coming back for more Do you remember The type of folk we used to be And the simple souls we used to see Uh-huh Do you remember A fallen man with no escape It seems he lives in yesterday Uh-huh Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Calgary Esports League League of Legends Championship Series featuring me, Trackhawk, and Jojo Barrientos, aka JB Red Phoenix, in the chat. That was all in one breath, and I just really wanted to do that. So, we I just. Am speechless. I, I Thank you, thank you. So, we just finished uh, what I would calmly and rationally call a uh, total stomp. To say that feels like an understatement there, Drew. <laughs> it, it definitely was a bit one-sided, unfortunately. So hopefully, our friends, the Upset Masters Team Wind versus the Masters of Winning, Masters Overrated, mm. two Masters in the ring. They're going to be coming up mm. next for this next match. So getting into the pick and ban phase. Mm. Yeah. I like what I, I see. I know, right? I do too. Uh, personally, my my favorite part of this entire thing is uh, easily the fact that we see Rengar and Zillion paired up. That is a phenomenal combination. Very good mid uh, jungle synergy that you can possibly uh, pretty much get through immediately. Can would it be count? It's not really a funnel strat per se, but it's like it's like you are basically giving him. I mean, Options. Rengar is a phenomenal tower diver and just diver in general. So mm -hmm. you give him a speed up uh, ability to be brought back to life if he dies, a Tom Kench, and a Brawl. Uh, it's that's a pretty hard protect this, this to carry. This seems very hard. Hey, I'm gonna be just carry. All yeah, the way. pretty much. Like they're putting the Rengar, all the fruit in the Rengar basket. And on the side of Masters Overrated, we've got Morgana to put a stop to that. Black Shield as well as uh, Bindings, as well as more Bindings in the Chains. Uh, Cassidy, who can get away uh, after mm -hmm. six, man, granted. Sivir, who can run really fast. Xin Zhao, who has one of the best auto attack deflectors in the entire game. Like his ultimate just basically stops him from taking damage, which is really That's... annoying. Yeah, no, I faced that a couple of times. It is pretty hard to deal with as an 80, 80 carry. So there's really only two scenarios I see. Either Team Wind gets far enough ahead that it doesn't matter, or Masters Overrated stays consistent, and unfortunately they'd probably be able to shut down the Rengar very quickly when he dives in. The so. one thing I'd say is Masters Overrated looks like they're trying to go for like a very group up and just kill ball everything. Sort of very, very much a picture. Whereas... Yeah. No, I think they're just running like a kill ball. As like if they can get in one big team fight, because look what they who they have they to top lane, cannon. That's pretty big. They do have some team fight synergy as well, but it, it's tough to say. We'll have to see how they get uh, play out these teams, and that brings us straight to game number two, coming your way. Game two. Team win versus. 
monsters overrated. And welcome to the Rift, ladies and gentlemen. We've got Team Wind lining up on the blue side. I do like the fact that they match the colors. Master's yeah. overrated. I like this. Absolutely. Look at the speed on that little guy. Oh, <laughs> I can't even run. Do, 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 do. You're too slow. <laughs> Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Five-man oh, stack going They're possible oh, yeah. for bot side invade here. Oh, 100%. And frankly, Braum is sitting uh -oh. right there. Oh, uh -oh. oh no. Braum. Oh, no. Braum. 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 No. Braum, no. <laughs> and he's dead. Bye. Okay. No chance. The blind Morgana bind is, frankly speaking, one of the hardest things to dodge. It might seem like a slow kill shot, uh, but unfortunately... I think it's got some serious hit ratios. Well, no, it's not even like the damage that it does. It's the fact that it roots you for like three seconds. And then when it's shot over the wall like that, you can only ever see it just as it enters the tri brush. So it's like. Can I also add to the fact that it doesn't slow for three seconds? It slows down for three flipping hours. It stuns you forever. It's just so annoying. <laughs> Your favorite. I know. I love it. I gotta thank Rank whoever. Blast code. Whoever does this Rancor Blast Code, I thank you. I'm it's so just happy. it's just your favorite thing. I Kitty Cat got play. <laughs> yeah. I just love following him on the spectator cam because it's just like pounce, pounce, and, you, and everything's <laughs> always just moving, moving, and really annoying. But Ooh. we see a very hard leash coming in from Team Wind, as kind of expected with this Rangar. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to call it all for one strat. Uh, I do want to say it is a bit of an all for one strat because basically once this Rangar gets ahead. It's a lot. Zinza going for an early gank, able to get a nice knockup onto the Tom Kench, forcing out the flash early. That is going to be a point of contention. They know that the Tom Kench is going to be the more gankable of pretty much all the lanes. I mean, Caitlyn yeah, Braum is not exactly the easiest to gank. Zillion is just going to be a bully, but he's got to speed up as well. That being said, I do have to admit this is going to be both Zillion... No, sorry. Both Zinzao and... And Rengar both started Krugs this time around. So this is the Kru uh, the red buff into Krug strategy. No, no, Rengar started red. So it would be red, red into Krugs. Red, that's what I said. I red thought you said into, into Krugs into red. Red into Krugs. Either red way. Krugs. Either way. They, they went from red to Krugs, and Zillion is going to be making a, wow, a respect flash as not able to get the knock up. I don't feel that the Cassidy mm. was in range and there's no ignite, so I think that might have just been a respect that's just, flash. That's just a transition gank for Zim Zhao, but yeah, definitely a respect gank for that. Meanwhile, we see Rengar, I wouldn't say power farming because he's only four goal, or full CS uh, head of the Zim Zhao so far. The Zim Zhao's burned two flashes for the side of Team Wind, so mm. frankly speaking, I think in the long term, we see Zin Zhao making a lot more proactive plays. And well, this Tom Kench is getting just bullied around 8 CS to 17. So already seeing around a, a 10 CS deficit for the side of Tom Kench. That's that's a thing with a range champion like Kennen. If you got if you let it let the range let the range be a problem. And he it's, catches it's out the Rengar too. Big problem. Just a little bit of damage as Ooh. the speed up does come through for Zen Zhao, but he flashes in and an easy first blood onto Chubby Monkey. The cannon is going to go in, flashes as well. Rengar does still have his flash up, and he's not going to be able to get away as Kennen takes down I Can Rage Quit in the jungle, and this is just going disastrously for Team Wing. Team Masters overrated, showing them why they're basically the masters of this being league. overrated. Yeah. <laughs> Of um, being overrated, yeah. Th that being said, <laughs> I, I have to get tell you one thing. That was not first blood. The first blood actually went to Braum. Sorry, the first went against Braum. Sorry. We missed some action in the bot lane. I take it. No, we. It was clear as day. Did I? I'm just losing it, man. I'm losing it. Zinzo return gank to the Tom Kench. No flash. Nothing he can do. Gonna pop the gray health to stay a little bit alive, but 
he's down. He's dead. There is nothing that he can possibly do yeah, except try to trade back. Ready. Rengar able to get a Ooh, nice sidestep. Gets the Bola, but not the Empowered Bola, onto the Sivir. She doesn't have Spell Shield up, so we do see the slow. Missed Bomb, not able to get the Double Bomb onto the Kent, uh, the Cassidy. Long the Castle shot. Win, as I like to call it. That feels, that champion feels like it's free elo anyway. Free elo. <laughs> free, I call it free elo. So, I just remembered, yes, Braum got first blood in the bush. I am just... Tired. <laughs> Maybe a little you. bit. I got you. Man. Thank you for reminding me. It's been a rough week, but it's that? It's already, mo it's only Monday? Oh. Yay. <laughs> so, Yo, back into League of Legends town. We see Masters Overrated bullying out Team Wind. Castlewind does have his ultimate now, so he's going to be able to... Gonna be scary. Gonna be scary. Gonna pop in. Gonna jump on to... Ooh, Morgoth is able to get a good binding and an excellent, excellent return kill as Sivir tries to go in and tries to answer that. The teleport is in for the side of Kennen. When he's going to pop the ultimate, he is going for just not even going to use it. As the flash is forced out of Braum, doesn't look like Sivir's going to be able to get the return part of that Q. And it is a clean two for one at the end of the day. Honestly, Caitlyn needed to sit a little bit farther back. Use her range to really give the Sivir a hard time. Well, it was the Morgana. The Morgana flashed in. And an Infernal Dragon of all the first dragons that Masters Overrated could get. Man. It's of course the one that's gonna. <laughs> it's gonna. It's the one that's gonna continue to snowball them the hardest. Can I say that Masters Overrated is a bit blessed by the Urn Jesus? Not as blessed as uh, Wedge in the previous one. Oh, Two geez. infernal dragons that, in a that row. That was nuts. That was. They just didn't have a chance. Got two infernal drakes early, and I mean, once that happens, scaling or not, guess what? You're gonna do damage. And I, I gotta give it to the Masters. Zen's out returning. Too bullying this Xin Zhao and, or sorry, this Zillion as the Kassadin waits. Oh, look at that. Not going to be able to get the kill onto Zillion. The ultimate is very well timed, able to keep himself alive at least this time around. I wanted, I wanted to make the Kent Killian the Zillion joke, but he's already died once, so that doesn't really work. I mean, that could be a cool nickname for him. Kent Killian the Zillion? Killian the Zillion. Yeah, but it's already been done before. Fair enough. I, there's not much that I can really say in terms of what's really going on because right now all it is is just... It's a lot of bot lane action. It's a lot of bot lane action and a lot of damage is coming through. The Sivir's able to get a nice trade onto Caitlyn, but she oh. fires back with a very good Peacekeeper. Rengar is there, able to get the damage onto the side of the Sivir, but the Embola goes on to Morgana and they're able to keep her pinned down just oh. in time and a good snipe from Caitlyn is able to easily answer the bot lane aggression that has been plaguing them this entire game. Oh, beautiful play by this Caitlyn. Must have been that must have been the lock on R cuz nope, that was her that was her peacemaker. Really? That was the peacemaker, I'm pretty sure. Was, it was a blue bullet instead of a purple bullet when I saw off that peacemaker. But, okay. I'll double check what skin she has, but I'm pretty sure it was the Q. Sure. Um, cuz yeah, all of her abilities are uh, blue. She's using the snake skin. It's not actually the snake skin. I just can't remember I, what, it has, what it is. I honestly don't know what it is because I I play Caitlyn. I have I, this I, skin. That's the funny part. Weird, because I have the police officer Caitlyn. Oh, good choice. But we see Tom Kench getting still bullied in the top lane, thirty-eight to fifty-one, so about ten CS down. You have to put in the kleptomancy in the, into effect here because Ken has been taking kleptomancy and he's been getting a lot out of this. Yeah. So up CS, up pretty much everything. Oh, oh no. Ooh. Nope, able to get roar and basically get out. I love how that's... Oh, never mind. I'm not going to shut up as Xin Zhao goes into the bot lane. Unable to pop the great health as Kennen is just burning down the frog. And Tom Kenj goes for a unexpected swim. Meanwhile, the Rengar is going to be diving in. Unfortunately, the, <laughs> the flash and the teleport away is easily able to get them outside of there. I keep saying easily, and I'm going to try and stop that. I, it wasn't really as easily as you thought it was. Oh, no, that was definitely the Q then. That was the Q, yep. Told huh. you. Change his color. I didn't know that. Isn't it great? Q doesn't Talk about that. skins all the time. Q Pop in there onto the bomb. But, no, the Cassidy 
very safe pick, especially when you're versus a Rengar who can jump oh, on yeah. you. The Rengar needs to be able to instantly burst you, or else you have enough time to flash and teleport away. We Could see the Rengar hanging that around here. Watch, Doesn't like, know the yeah, bot lane is warded. Morgana is going to throw out a binding. No, she's just going to stay there, and Zinzao is going to make a trip towards the bot to try and counter gank. This is a beautiful play. Team Wind has no idea that Masters Overrated is about to close the jaws of a very, very deadly trap. Very big vice right, right now. We do see in the mid lane a little bit of damage going the way, but nope, it looks like the Rengar is going to back. No, he's still staying in the bush. Oh, because the when Red is down. The, Red Ward's down. When is the trigger going to... Nope. Nope, he's gone. They saw the Red Ward pop, and they are out of there. Very dangerous scene. We saw the Zin Zhao hanging out of the bot side. But Ooh, Caitlyn and Brom need to start playing it safe now. If that that Zin Zhao sticks around, they might. He is sticking around, spending a lot of time in that bush. It's almost like they are trying to get them to aggress on them, uh, kind of bait them in. But this I, do, is I don't too easy of think. A bait. I I don't think that they're going to go for it. Caitlyn doesn't really want to. Meanwhile, the Zin Zhao is going to be doing not a lot of damage to the Cassidy. Meanwhile, the Cassidy is going to be doing more than enough to the Zillion to knock him out of lane and potentially force him to use his ultimate. Yeah, this is not a good... This is exactly not what Team Win wants, but Masters of Overrated taking... Just dominating this game here. Well, they haven't dominated just yet, and as I say that, since I was going to be popping into the bot lane, Brom is down before he even has a chance to think as the return kill. Onto the side of Team Win as Zin Zhao sticks around a little bit too much, not able to get them stunned with the double bombs off. The TP is committed from the side of Zillion, and they're able to at least answer one for two. But at the end of the day, that is still three to nine for the side of Masters Overrated, and we see a 4,000 gold lead. Ugh. This is, again, this is where I start saying the snowball's already starting for Masters Overrated. If they keep this pressure up, which I'm very certain Zillion they can. ultimate is used and it is forced as we see Tom Kench going to the top side trying to get a decent amount of damage onto the cannon. He does have the devour available and ready for him, but the cannon is just staying so far out of range and not able to do nearly enough damage, not able to do really anything as the Rengar is just clearing out mid lane, trying to catch up in terms of CS. He is roughly 10 CS down in comparison to his jungle opponent, the Zin Zhao as the double bomb is going through, but it's delayed, so it's not able to get the stun. A good amount of damage. Zin Zhao is there to respond. Rengar is waiting in the wings. The Zillion is not down for the count just yet. There comes the Rengar. He's able to jump in and then immediately burst down the Zin Zhao, but the Braum is down for the count as well, as we see a trade of 1-4-1. One one. Now, it was the Zin Zhao in exchange for the Braum, so I would say that still goes for the side of Team Wind, but still, a 1-1 one for one trade. Rengar does start to get 3-2 and two on the board. I'm a little nervous of this Tom Kench right now. That that sorry, that cannon is really putting some damage numbers up for, against this board. Well, cannon is four and zero, so I mean, he's got lane priority right now. That's true. He's got forty CS up on the Tom Kench, and I mean, you 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 can bench the Kench, but I mean, this is just kind of beating the Kench almost. <laughs> You're just beating him dumps? in lane. Did he? Basically, Masters overrated. I, thrashing, I the, thrashing the Kench? I'd thrashing the Kench? Trash, I think they just trashed the Kench. <laughs> As we see more and more plates go down for the side of Masters overrated. This is one thing that people might be wondering. How do they occur a roughly six or 7,000? No, more. 25,000 to 19,000. So, yeah, 6,000. How do they incur 6,000 gold lead with only six kills and no turrets? And it's because of those turret plates. Yeah. They've gotten almost all of the turret plates in top lane. They've gotten almost all of the turret plates in mid lane. And they've got almost all of the turret plates in bot lane. Plus, you have to add to it. You have to first add that blood. Sivir. Also, you have to add the first blood. Also, Sivir, very good wave clear. Probably the best wave clear, I would say. No. In legal legends. Yeah, there is massive CS differentials as well. So you see 40 up for the top lane. You see around 12 up for the side of the jungle. You see, oh, Sivir is going to be popping in. The Xin Zhao is easily able to clean up the Braum and slays the Stagger as Morgana is not going to be able to land anything and still continues to prowl. They're going for a, a two Infernal Dregs in two games? Okay, sure. 
Guess we're getting blessed today. You're, we're getting RNG blessed because uh, Masters Overrated, they just took their scaling comp and they just went to town with it. This is going to be very, very difficult. Arguably, Team Wind does have the one-shot potential, but double that, Infernal Dragon. I don't think the one-shot potential is as relevant as, as it is. It is usually in solo queue. Potentially not, no. And Sivir does still have that 300 CS win condition. Mm -hmm. Just, hey, get Sivir 3-4 items, and she's going to be able to carry. Well, she's already on two here. Stopwatch fired as well. Stopwatch with the third item package. So I think in this case, we might see the two two and a half item power spike in this case. Potentially. She does only have Essence Reaver. She's going to be going for that very expensive Infinity Edge. Just mm. getting bullied. Zillion, that is that is not fun to see. Uh, uh, Cassidid, Cassawin. Cassidin, Cassawin. Yeah. Zillion against Zillion. Oof, that's a tough yeah. matchup. Can't, it's supposed cannon. to be Zillowin, but uh, no, in this case, unfortunately, we do see the Rengar oh. pop in and almost able to completely eviscerate the uh, Sivir, but unfortunately, it looks like Zidzao is there for the side. On oh, the hunt is popped. The Q is not able to get enough damage, and Morgana just gets absolutely Deleted. stunned under tower? Question mark, question mark? I would say blasted under tower. She didn't look like she was stunned, but we'll have to see that one back. Absolutely. I'll see if I can get that back in time as we do see a little bit more action while Team Wind is trying to save their bot tier one. Inside of Masters of Ray, Castle Wind is there to not get the Braum. Braum is the recipient of Zillion Ultimate, so that is no longer available. He doesn't go down. Level up for the side. Zinzao is going to go down onto the Sip, onto the Caitlyn. Caitlyn is not going to get into... As the si flash from Sivir is there, oh. but the Castle Wind is able to pop in and get a beautiful follow-up double kill. Just an easy... Clean, my dude. Clean. <laughs> Pops in. All right, now that we have a minute, we're going to try and see if this replay is up and running. Pop in and almost able to completely eviscerate the Sivir, uh, but unfortunately it looks like Zidzao is there for the side. On oh, the hunt is popped. The Q is not able to get enough damage, and Morgana just gets absolutely Deleted. stunned under tower? Question mark, question mark? I would say black. Question mark indeed, as we Eek. see Morgana just kind of get caught, stun locked, and unfortunately she was trying to tank the tower, try and continue the dive forward, but too little, too late. Yeah. She doesn't get out in time. That's, that's unfortunate for that Morgana. She's going to have to try and really claw her way back into this game now. Well, I don't think she has to worry too much because the rest of her team, they've taken down two turrets in the meantime and are sitting at a very pretty 10,000 gold lead. Now yeah. Rengar pops on the hunt. He is looking for a pick, trying to get something out of this, but it looks like it might have just been to try and disengage the Masters Overrated team from pushing any further. That being Zinzao. said, Zinzao is going to try and make a play. Sivir's trying to go for mid lane. Agreed. And we don't see anything come of that very long cooldown from the side of Rengar. So unfortunately, they're going to have to wait a little bit. Mm -hmm. Cute little spell shield. Still gets time bombed, but still cute. Yeah. yeah. I don't think the damage is really a lot from them. Oh. Game. Braum is going to be trying to go in, but <laughs> the Kennet is just speeding around the map. They're going to just push in and try and get this tier 1 a little bit of damage, maybe onto the tier 2 turret. I feel kind Tom Kedge is coming around the side. The binding does not land. He's going to be caught out. But it looks like the cannon is also going to be caught out. The ultimate for Braum committed. While cannon is spit out directly into the line of fire from Caitlyn. Teleport is committed from the side of Castle Wind, but he is immediately stunlocked by the Caitlyn trap. Looks like the time bombs are going to be doing a little bit more damage. As Casted pops in, flashes out, able to get a... Lean kill onto the Brahmin response for their lost top laner. Ooh. The binding onto the Tom Kench is going to prevent a little bit. Blast Cone is able to get him a little bit of distance. Great health is popped, but it is too little. No! The Zillion Ultimate is onto them, and they disengage in time not to kill him and to prevent the re engage from happening. Very good. Ooh. Oh! Wow. I was about to say goodbye, Sivir. Uh. Very good job by Masters Overrated playing around the Zillion ult, but Sivir. Too little, too late. Popped on, jumped on, and just deleted. Yikes! Poor Sivir, just getting cat, just being catnapped. Right? 
by this poor <laughs> rain guy. Uh, cat toy chew toy. Let's see a little bit of that replay. Re-engage from happening. Very good. Oh. oh wow. I was about to say goodbye, Siver. That was a delete. We pop back as <laughs> Caitlyn's having to run away from the cannon. But a huge ultimate. Still get um, and the flash to secure the second kill. That is a three, oh! the triple kill follow up. Oh man, I, that is the ultimate feels bad moment. Kennen seven and one and gets a massive outplay. Not sure My apologies. Uh, that is called the stream deck. <laughs> oh, Rengar is able to get a good amount of damage on the Morgana, but it is too little. Unfortunately, that seems to be the uh, name of this game for the Rengar right now. Just too little damage. He's waiting in the wings. Gonna try and try get go the assassination for the dragon, but nope. Instead just gets, gets assassinated. Instead gets assassinated. So... I'm not sure if I got the replay in time. We're going to try and uh, get that playing in just a second so we can see exactly the glory that was that Zillion triple kill. Huge ultimate. Holy get a, and the flash to secure the second kill. That is a three, oh! the triple kill follow up. That was Kennen. That was Kennen. Thank you. I am just great. Just you're doing fine. You're doing fine, buddy. Just keep going. Just keep going. We see Zillion getting burned down. We see the Rift Herald. Shelly is doing her dance and is able to get a nice little damage poke off onto the turret. I say damage poke, but in reality, it was half. It's like deleting. it was half health on the turret. As boom, half health is down again, and the turrets are falling for the side of Team Wind. As we see, five turrets to none. Seven kills to 19. It's Masters just, overrated geez. up a total of 15,000 gold. The win condition I, of the Rengar is steadily dropping, unfortunately. And I honestly think that 300 CS Sivir is more like 150 CS Sivir. Mm. And has to commit the heal to try and make sure that that... <laughs> that null energy is not able to take down the Caitlyn. Oh. I feel really bad for Team Win. They've been on such a hot streak. Yeah, they've won the we... past two or three games in a row. They went from what being kind of cold at the start, and then they've just been on a tear for the past two or three weeks. But unfortunately, versus Masters overrated. Well, Masters might be overrated, but these guys aren't. So Caitlyn, <laughs> don't don't do careful. it. Don't do it half health immediately despite committing almost all of her abilities it's gotta hurt it's gotta yeah. hurt this castle wind is just putting oh. so much damage style and stopwatch is that gonna kill her no, no no okay we did see a game where the stopwatch from jensen was uh unable to well it did do a whole lot as on the hunt is popped to get away from Masters overrated. So unfortunately, yeah. oh, th that's not good when you see a when you see a cat running. Yeah, unfortunately, the predator has become the prey in this situation, yeah. and all that Team Wind has left is the in hip turrets, as uh -oh. they know exactly where he is. Oh, but able to give Castlewind a run for his money. Going into the Gromp, but it looks like the Zinzao is going to be here. Blast coming over the side and able to secure this kill. With no Just effort. That's... No effort. Granted, the Rengar was trying to. Oh, gets oh. knocked back, but unfortunately, the Robbie is going to be immediately torn down, electrocuted, and lost. The Tom Kenji is going to be trying to save the Zillion. Looks like the double bomb is able to buy a little bit of time. Sivir is still chasing. The flash is committed for the side. Tom Kenji is going down to Buddy Cow. Animals in the house as Kennen. First game, it was the Zaya. This game, it's the Kennen. Just Damn. tearing through team win. Electroshock for days as Zinzao flashes in. The Zillion ultimate is committed to keep her alive, but the binding is not Ooh, in time. Dang. Able to get the flash away as Zinzao is pushed back and shut down by the side of Caitlyn. Now it's a three, uh, 4v2. 4v3 as Kennen is not got his ultimate. Just back up. Could be looking for the re-engage as he pops in. Tries to get the... Proto Belt and does gets a nice proc, but the Q is able to take down a second kill onto the Rengar. A one for one trade in this, and outnumbered 
Masters Overrated may be, but unfortunately it looks like they are not the ones that need to be afraid. Castle Wind is able to get a good chunk of damage onto the Caitlyn, but that is the end of it. Masters Overrated recalls, resets, and probably has their sights set on the Baron. Yeah, Masters Overrated just running up the scoreboard now and just running away with this game. Team Win has a good fighting chance if they manage to outlast till late game. That being said... Well, the double Infernal Dragons kind of disagree with you there. I want to say yes, and there's only one way that this costume can go. With the double Infernal Drake with Masters Overrated having... I honestly say it is game to Masters Overrated. That being said, Team Win still has one lucky chance. They need to be absolutely perfect now. Yeah, if they are able to get caught out by the Cassidy and completely turned down immediately, forcing the flash in, and then Tom Kench got caught on the side and double kill is pulled in from Cassidy, as well as the Rengar is not able to get a single kill in return. Caitlyn, however, is able to answer, but Sivir is going to be chasing her down, and that is a shutdown for the side of Lero. And unfortunately, uh, you remember that perfect uh, performance that you were kind of asking for Team Wind? Controversial one, the controversial one at a time strategy says, uh, nope, Baron yeah, not even needed. Baron's a formality. Teleport committed for the side of Kennen, I believe, as he's waiting in the side, able to get a needlessly large rod. Well, it, it, it's needless because, frankly, he's never going to get a chance to use it. All but Braum down for the side of Team Wind. Are they going to try and oh, commit it? I no, doubt this it. Is just they, would, they wouldn't go for it. Oh, oh they, they committed will. there, but too little, too late. The Nexus goes down, and that is a decisive game for the side of Masters Overrated. We're learning, Fast games. We're learning two things here, Drew. Okay. One. One. Most of our games have been one-sided again. Week one all over again, yeah. Two. The Jackie Chan one at a time strategy <laughs> does not work. To be period. fair, to be fair, Team Win didn't actually go in one at a time. They got caught out one at a time. And they tried to make the best of it. They did get Cannon down, but yeah. uh, not much else. That's unfortunate. And it is. And we've been really blessed with the double Infernals lately. We're going to have to see if they go three for three on that one, because uh, frankly speaking, that would be just insanity if they were able to pull that off. Agreed. Agreed. So we're going to go into a quick break. We will be right back after this. And I believe all that's left is Ono versus... Yeah. Ono, next match. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs>
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to game number three of the Calgary Esports League, League of Legends Championship Series. Over and over and over again. <laughs> We're just going to keep doing that every single time we get in. Okay. So, we've got uh, Ono versus yeah. Black Lotus. And no, that isn't us being worried about Black Lotus stomping all over the competition. Ono has proven to be more than resilient in the past little while. It's been very interesting seeing Ono's basically story. They started strong. Fell off a little bit, so stumbled a little bit. Well, and to now... be fair, the only team that they've lost against is Masters overrated. To be fair, then that means most of these teams, if not all of these teams, have, have lost, lost to Masters, Masters overrated. overrated. Yes, they have. To, <laughs> like, to put it into some perspective, oh no, I would give really good respect to you because, mm -hmm. man, this team has been super solid. Yeah, with the one exception of the game, but it wasn't a Smash game. That was one of our better games, actually. So, mm -hmm. overall, I would say they, uh,. Well, they're the team that people look at and go, oh no. <laughs> oh no. So we're going to get right into pick and ban phase. Game play. All ooh, right. Ooh, ooh, this oh no team is making me so happy. All right, what's making you so happy? There's a like Israel and Lux, and technically, if you're paying attention to the lore in this thing. Oh, shush. Stop it. Ah. We're, not, we're not worried about... Uh, <laughs> It's not a fanfic. It's actually It's definitely more. a fanfic. But it's, anyways, we've got Rise in the top lane, Sejuani in the jungle, Irelia in mid lane is my personal pick for uh, someone to take over the game. We've seen Faker, we've seen Rookie, we've seen a lot of different people use it, and hopefully we will see Ono's mid laner, because they do switch around a little bit. Mm -hmm. On the side of switching, Black Lotus, like a 10 or 14 player roster. So we really don't know who's playing in these. So we have no idea who's playing. <laughs> they don't have any sort of consistency. But uh, let me put it this way. YYC ADC on the side of Ono was the person to watch. Shout out you. Yeah. I got you. But uh, on Black Lotus, we have Vayne in the top lane. So a very dominant match against the Rise. Interesting. Jarvin, very good synergy. Malthazar, who's my personal favorite pick for when I really, really don't want to try and win and still win anyways. Sure, I play Malthazar support is great. top, so to be Malthazar's fair, guys, support is also great. He is so annoying. They changed his, they changed him in the patch, and even still, he's still good. Yeah, How? he's great. I love Why him. Why is this man so good? Kaisa, we see Kaisa again, hopefully with a uh, slightly different skin. And Nautilus, you thought Alice that you were done with Nautilus, but nope, he is back, and he is bigger than ever. The little bugger still bugs me. That little bugger still bugs me. The he's not even bugger, little. Yeah. He's huge. <laughs> he's huge. He's like an elephant in the room. Absolutely. My goodness. Speaking of huge, we're going to get into game number three. Final game of the evening. Ono versus Black Lotus. Game three. Ono versus Black Lotus. Welcome back to the Rift, ladies and gentlemen, for the final game of the evening. Ono versus Black Lotus, Red versus Blue, the masters of disaster and making their teammates and their enemies say their namesake versus the largest roster in the history of ever. Probably not, but I mean, uh, it's a pretty big yeah, roster. Not really. That's actually pretty average on the size of 10 man roster. 10 man roster is pretty average. I guess Korea has done that quite a bit, hasn't they? Well, it's five mains, five backups, and. <laughs> five I mains, it's... five backups, plus three supports, two side coaches, and we have a red side versus blue side start on the jungle. Hmm. Actually, red side, red side. What am I saying? Possible red in the Krugs again. Let's see where the jungle goes. Absolutely. Well, it says Wani is going to go straight to the Krugs because Krugs were changed, and that's really important. But J4 making a very quick level 2 dive up to the top lane. We're going to hopefully get up there in just a second. Vayne versus a hook missing onto the Ezreal as we see the first skill shot go down from there. Rise is flashing out of the way. The tumble is able to secure a little bit of extra damage. And Rise is going to have to play incredibly passive now that his flash is gone. I'm sorry, I'm fangirling a little bit. The Lux skin is beautiful. Is that... Uh, Battle Academia. Battle Academia, but it's not the Prestige, so obviously they don't play this enough. I don't, yeah. We see Vayne That's going for the tumble, not able to get the third proc off. Rise is gonna be bullied, but you know who else is gonna be bullied? Unintentionally is Aurelia. 
Yeah. Malthazar Ooh, versus yeah. Aurelia is going to be great. I've played this matchup, and if you're good at it, uh, Aurelia has zero fun times. Yeah, she can dash all over the place, but guess what follows you? Malefic Vision. Guess what stops Ooh. you from doing that? Ultimate. Malthazar's ultimate is the most annoying thing in the world. You basically tell one person they're not allowed to play League of Legends. You just tell them to be like, stay here. Well, like Morgana's ult tells you to stay here. Malthazar just says, you're not allowed to play. Just just put your keyboard away for the next second or so. Because guess what? You ain't doing anything. And if you die in that time, which is a very good chance, uh, you're going to be doing even less. Because guess what? Gray mm, Screen true. Simulator 2019... It's a thing in League of Legends. Ugh, I, I don't like it. Nobody does. Ryze is going to be able to wave clear against the Bane. So I don't think that's quite as bad of a matchup as mm, you It's might. about it's, even. Like, I'd give it a little bit more to Vayne because she can scale a little bit better than Ryze, but even still. Ryze not scale? I, I do. He does scale, but I don't think as hard as Vayne does. I mean, Vayne has some great tank busting capacity, but there's not really a tank except for Sejuani. I guess Aurelia, if you really want to consider it, but mm, eh. it's a stretch. It's a stretch. She's but, a bruiser. Yeah. And like even then, it's like she does build some tank items. But oh, good hook onto the side of Lux, but the damage coming out from the side of YYC ADC. Half health for the Lux versus almost the entire health bars of both Nautilus and Kaisa. Sorry, I'm gonna take uh, I'm gonna take the side of Ono on this one. Yeah, Speaking. I'm with I'm with you on there, Drew. Like this Israel is just playing to his best. Absolutely, burning through that mana pool. Definitely starting to get a little bit low in terms of damage, but J4 and Sejuani finds this out. Flag Drag is committed. We see the stun onto the side of Ono, but the first blood has not yet been committed. The dash onto the side of Aurelia, and they are not able to co they're not oh, able to so secure it. That was single. Digit health from the side of J4, just barely squeaking out there. A very well executed. Oh, the stun is going to onto the vein, but she's able to get a couple of auto attacks stunned within range. Unfortunately, so Ryze is able to get the trade that he quite wanted. Ooh, big! That Israel, the the essence flex into into Mystic Shot. Oh no! Don't. Oh, oh but the, it doesn't get the he, he doesn't get any damage. Wow. He just. Dives into turret? Wow. Word. That was actually really good. Sejuani was coming from behind, so Vayne knew that she was dead. Hmm. So she goes for the all-in potential on Rise, hopefully getting it. Would have liked to see the uh, second proc before doing the uh, blast away. The, that is true. Uh, condemn. But unfortunately, a very good play otherwise. Able to get the execute off and not give up anything hmm. to the side of Ono. Oh, look at that. They, they, you know who is giving up stuff, though? This, oh, Kaisa. Really? Yeah, true. 28 to 41. Yeah, YYC, you gotta give it to YYC ADC being able to put the, not only a lot of zoning potential with this Israel, but also a lot of damage and a yeah. good amount of wave clear on, on top of that. Yeah, he is definitely just keeping his namesake. Keeping the town of YYC happy. Keeping us proud of Seeing such a high-level uh, League of Legends player, granted every single player here is from Calgary, so I guess that, mm. avoid comment. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I want to say so. Either way, we do see the Lux and Ezreal doing what they do best, which is bully. Battle Academia is a appropriate skin because guess what? Both of them are bullies. Interesting enough here, only one has the Battle Academia skin. Oh, Nautilus is going to go for... Ooh. Not even close. That's the hashtag calculated that you see right there. Yeah, no kidding. We're gonna have to. I would love to see that happen on replay, but I'm not mad. A little bit uh, concerning is actually the Malthazar in mid lane, uh, 37 to 60. Uh, frankly yeah. speaking, whenever I played that matchup, uh, it's usually gone my way. Uh, you could just perpetually wave clear. Uh, with the Malefic Vision as well as the minions, so I'm a little bit surprised to see him so far behind, but, I mean, I guess he's just respecting the Aurelia's potential for all-in. Yeah, that's also true. She has a lot of, like, the dash all-in potential is pretty big. On top of that, it's, her, she also has a, she also has team match, so that gives her a lot of wave clear as well. And a lot oh, of damage. Very good ultimate from the Sejuani is gonna get absolutely blasted by the Rise and the auto attack Oh, so close, and it is able to uh, unfortunately not get the return kill while the Rise does get a little bit of alone time with this turret. 
beautiful layering of the CC ultimate as well as the stun. You saw absolutely no time for the Vayne to get away until all of the CC was done. And by that point, she was pretty much dead. One auto attack come through and to secure the kill, very well played. Very good first blood for the side of Ono. Very, very strong play for the side of Ono. Oh, oh is committing the true shot barrage. Kaisa is down to half health. The Mouse Lazar is coming in. Hook lands onto the Lux. And remember what I was saying about being able to play League of Legends? Well, unfortunately, the ultimate is cancelled early. And the Malefic Vision is not able to get the kill. But the J4 definitely does. Aurelia comes in. The Vanguard's Edge is dropped onto all three members. Stuns going left, right, and center. And YYC ADC is able to pick up one kill. Aurelia is able to pick up a double kill in the meantime. And it has collapsed for Black Lotus. The bot lane proving to be the straw that broke the camel's back as we see a nice spike of 50, 15,000 gold up for the side of Ono. 4,000 gold lead. Very well played. But man, Ono being able to turn around this game with that Israel as with that true shot for large to start off the fight. Collapsed major. beautifully. The Kaisa is able to get a mark on. Flag and Drake does stop the Sejuani from getting over the wall and a Beautiful kill. He's not able to get in. It's this. Relia pops in, dies into the J4, but it doesn't look like she's going to be able to get the rest of the damage. Ezreal is continuing to pour damage into the backside. He is completely isolated, though. He gets shields. He gets everything, but Sejuani's Blizzard is not able to do in nearly enough damage. The Malefic Vision does not get transferred to another person, and that is a end of that. Very good turnaround. We do see the Malthazar. He does take the Honey Fruit, but it looks like the Sejuani and Lux Ooh, are going to be able to get out. Yes, they do. And a very good turnaround. We see a returning two kills. Still 3k gold up for the side of Ono with a few of the turret plates. The CS differential as well as the first blood gold. But a very good turnaround and definitely overcommitting from the side of Whoa, Ono. Shot barrage going for the J4. Goes nope. just south. Goes wide. Swing and a miss. Good try, Israel. Better luck next time. I do like seeing this. So, we finish that little scuffle, and we see that a lot of the gold has gone... Never mind. Nautilus is going to go in for the side of the rise. The hook goes wide. He is going to be forced to flash out the phase rush. Is there in time? As we see a little bit of a... Uh, I guess a frame stutter, shall we call it? Just, you uh, know, just, we're just freeze-framing. Just freeze-framing, you know. I got you. <laughs> uh, so, as I was saying before... Now that we finished that little scuffle, we have Rise with one kill, Sejuani with one kill, Irelia with two kills, and Ezreal with one kill. And Lux being the best support Lux that she is and totally not stealing kills, as every single support Lux that I've ever played against with does, is sitting at 0, 1, and 4. Do I, do I taste a bit of salt there, Drew? Maybe a little bit of salt, but it's okay. I'm not salty at all. The the, the 6 and 1 Lux from the last game I played totally didn't, didn't tilt me whatsoever. Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Not to at all. I tried to play Lux support, uh, and I don't really do so well. So. Nah, she's she's great. What are you talking about? Lux support is totally great. Totally the best true in the whole term. Drew, 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 relax. It's okay. It's fine. No, it's fine. fine. Everything is fine. Ono is winning. Black Lotus is... Uh, oh, oh, good Cataclysm. Gets the Cataclysm into <laughs> the Mastery Flash, and very good follow-up there as... Dashes away. The Vanguard's Edge is dropped onto the Urelia, but the Flag Drag is there in the side. Says one is able to pick up the kill onto Bane, and the J4 dodges and sidesteps. Fancy Feet is able to get out of there, but the Flash is taken down with the Arctic Bite, as well as a double kill for the Sejuani for the single rise kill of the top lane. Man, Very good collapse from It would have been a nice turnaround if we could have easily called it out as Happy Feet. Wombo Combo. Happy Feet. Wombo Combo. But, that ain't Falco. But unfortunately, uh, no. We don't see the Wombo Combo just oh. yet. Anyone who plays Smash Bros. knows exactly what I'm talking about. The hook goes wide. Depth Charge is going to go down. Kaisa is going immediately in for the Lux. The Malzar is here on the side. Izzy's going to drop the ult just in time. The damage is starting to come through with the Lux, but the ultimate is not there in time. The Malefic Vision is able to clear it up, and Kaisa gets on the board with two and one. Very good play from there. Oof. Those, poor, those poor Lux having to sacrifice herself for her own Israel just to make sure she gets out alive. You're not writing a fanfic about this. No, I'm not. 
It's already been done. <laughs> About Ezreal, or uh, like sacrifice yourself for the Ezreal. I'll take your word on that as we see Ezreal just going in. Look at this. He, he is not deterred. Of course, he has the rise to follow up there. A very good stopwatch buys a little bit of time from the Nautilus, but it's uh. not enough. The rise is able to do enough consistent damage alongside the Ezreal to take it down. Sejuani is going hard at the top Ooh. lane, but the Bane is just chewing her to pieces. Bane, of course, does some of the best tank busting damage you could possibly get. A rally in the mid lane. You have to respect that tank busting damage from the, from Vayne. Absolutely. There's not much you can do if you if you're big and you're thick. You have to respect that. If you're big and thick, you have to respect the Vayne. Yes. I like your way of thinking. Of course. Sejuani is way clearing in the top lane, unfortunately. So it does look like at least one turret plate might go down. No, she's going to dash in onto the side of Vayne. A collapse is being pulled as we do see the blue team turret straight down and the cataclysm goes wide a great flash for the side of Sejuani in the bot side Nautilus and Kaisa were pushed off their turret as real and Lux were easily able to push that in secure first turret we do see a growing 6,500 gold lead Sejuani is not going to go down to the Gromp thankfully yeah, that would have been pretty embarrassing if she did that was a great flash out from Sejuani absolutely textbook She's still sticking around on the top side, so a little bit concerned there, but does have just the, to push, just to push on the wave in the tower. Just help does have the bear, or the Rift Herald empowered recall, so it's okay. She'll get back to base just fine. Rise is starting to do damage. Rise auto attacks versus a turret is just it. May, it feels mm. bad, man. It feels bad. Like if you lose a tower to Rise, it's just that feels embarrassing. Honestly. It really does. So there we are. Down. Finally, is able to take down J4. Is there? Gets the flag drag. Is. Taking some down immediately below half health. Vayne gets the it, very nice Blade of the Roman King and able to secure the kill with the J4 on the side. Would have liked to see the kill to go to the side of the Vayne. I think they were actually going for that, but the J4, I believe he had red buff and that burned her down. Yeah, and that's the one, I think Rise overstayed way too long. Way too long. Did get the turret, is able to secure a second turret for the side of Ono. And we do see the Rift Herald. The ultimate is committed onto the side of the Ezreal. The Depth Charge as well, but it goes wide as Ezreal goes over the wall. Now he's going to be coming in from behind. The Essence Flux does a massive chunk of damage to the side of the Nautilus. And he, he is chasing them out. He is saying, this is my base. This is my town. We've seen already one crazy ADC carry. Kaisa is chasing down the Sejuani. Does use the ultimate to get in charge. Ooh. But a very good Arctic fight is able to almost lock her out. But we do see the Lux, as well as the Aurelia, starting to creep down. The dragon does look like it's going to be the next one. And we see the first Infernal Dragon. Apparently, what? Infernal Dragons is all we get in this entire time. Oh, we got Ocean Dragon second game. We got Ocean Dragon, but uh, Infernal Drakes always one and two. But, like, this is unprecedented. That's it really three is. Games Malefic in a row, Vision is on to rise. He's getting chased down by the minions, but should be able to take that down. Black Lotus is fighting back. They're able to secure the Infernal Dragon. And Ono caught a little bit slacking. Unfortunately, they are going to lose that precious damage resource. Would have been quite nice to have with a scaling Ezreal. Ezreal yeah. sitting on two items right now. True Shot Barrage goes across, Ooh. trying to steal the blue buff, but it looks like he is going to be trying to zone out. We see the J4 go in onto the Rise. Rise flashes out, but the Fission is on top of him. Teleport is committed from the side of Aurelia. She's going to be dashing in. Why was he ADC? Kills! The J4. Nautilus is being chased down now. Vanguard's Edge is dropped onto the Nautilus for just a slay a second. Ooh, so close. They're like, where's the ADC? Oh, that was definitely a questionable thing. It really, though, makes it, uh, definitely makes the Black Lotus team question whether or not that was a engage for them or an engage for everyone else as Vayne is trying to do, desperately to do enough damage. The stun goes wide. And for now, it is a one for four for the side of Ono. They are really starting to put a nice little bow on top of this game while they close it out. I want to say they're putting the nails in the coffin for sure, because look at the damage, boys. That is some serious numbers going up. Absolutely. We see the Sorcerer Boots coming out from the side of Ezreal, uh, definitely helping his Mystic Shot damage. Uh, is he going blue? Like, all blue? He's yeah, blue build, man. Gotta go blue build. Gotta get the Blade of the Rune King next. Gotta get, uh, what else is blue? But I guess he could get the... 
I want to say he's taking Mirror Mana here, but uh, no, this is classic Blue Israel. No, nah, he might be going for uh, Ludin's Echo, actually. Lost Chapter, of course, does build into Ludin's Echo. That Very popular third item on uh, Ezreal since he does a lot of poke damage. That is also true. I have to, I'll give it to you there. Does too. take the blue buff. We see Vayne taking her red buff as well. Ugh. I, I don't know how I feel about this Vayne right now, especially if, even though you do ha are facing it really, really well into Rise. I don't think they have the team fight potential, especially with Israel being on two items now. Spiking pretty hard now, but if he I, gets I his third... I think they have the team fight potential. The problem is Vayne's only sitting on a Blade of the Rune King. That she needs a Gwinsu Rage Blade. She needs an IE. She needs damage items uh, before yeah, she's able true, to start true. to really shred through teams and take over. Kaisa, of course, can definitely help out with that, but the Ezreal's already looking for third item. He's going to be poking down the champions left, right, and center, and we saw the damage that happened. Nautilus isn't that tanky, but he's definitely not squishy by any stretch of the imagination. No. Not supposed to be anyways. That's what that's kind of my issue here. Is it would as we see Nautilus taking some little bit of MR just to combat the Israel here. Spectre scale, yep. And but I don't I don't think it's enough. I, I honestly think you need to be like really going ham against him. And you have to respect other damages that damage sources as Wow. Taking a half health bite out of the J4, one of the tankier members of the side of Black Lotus. Sejuani waiting on the wings, numbers. waiting to see if they're able to get anything. Nautilus is kind of starting to look for a little bit of fission. J4 is using health pots to try and get a little bit more regen Ooh. up. Just there's a lot of damage on. There's the table a lot of here, damage, guys. and they're they're playing coy with each other right now. It's uh, do you want to go in? Do you want to go in? No, you you go in. You go in. As immediately oh. the Sejuani jumps across all the ultimates, bird vanguards edge. Lux Laser, Blizzard, everything dropped down onto the side of Black Lotus, and Vayne goes immediately down. J4 tries to get the Flag of Drake, but he is too little too late as he gets a three-quarter chunk for his time. Essence Flux goes through and just about takes down the Kai'Sa. The proc on that is doing damage, and we see just the savior known as the Nautilus coming through. Beautiful play and an absolutely vicious attack on Devane. That was an exclamation point. Oh, yeah. And an asterisk saying, to you, from Ono, with love, GG. <laughs> I got to turn it back towards that, that final spark from Lux. That was beautifully layered with the... Sorry, what was the ultimate again? So, we had the... Blizzard knocked out from Sejuani. Yep. Locked down. Then we had the Q... I'm just going to pause here because it looks like that Ono is going to be forced off of Baron. We we're a little bit concerned about the 50-50 smite. The J4 goes in for a beautiful two-man cataclysm, but he just gets annihilated, oh. burned down by oh. the Lux. The Ezreal is doing way too much damage. Vanguard's Edge isn't even dropped in this fight from what we can see so far. Sejuani goes to the side and takes down another member as three people drop for the side of Black Lotus. Oh no, going strong with five members down the mid lane. Oof, that was exactly not what they wanted at all. They were hoping to get a little bit of damage. But it was exactly what Oh no wanted. Oh no, that was exactly what Oh no. Oh no, oh no indeed. Ugh. Again, YYC ADC showing that showing us why he's really good at basically any AD, AD carry champion at this point. YYC ADC, good ADC. D who'd have knew? Who knew? Who, who would have known? Like, I, I, did I, you know? I, I pegged him as a top player, man. I, I saw the Israel and I went, yes. Mid or top Ezreal flex. That is exactly what we have in this meta. <laughs> Confused what? look from JoJo. Just ignore me. I, did I just hear mid or top Israel? Absolutely. It's a Korean meta. Don't question it. Absolutely saw it back in Season 3. Totally relevant now. Yeah, okay, because we're playing in Season 3. 100%, <laughs> dude. This isn't this is even... Like, what else would we play, be playing in? Like, I don't know. Bunny food for specials? Many, exactly. That's exactly what we should be doing. As we see the reset come through for Ono, oh they are going to be pining for that dragon while they're sitting on their 12... Thousand gold lead. Yikes! They, these guys need to start putting the nails in the coffin on Black Lotus and closing this game out. And I'm pretty sure this Baron is going to be Lucent more than enough. Comes across the Arctic fight is there. The Rise teleport is popping through it. He's able to get a easy kill 
onto the Nautilus, who is the... Nautilus for this life anymore. I'll give you that one, Drew. <laughs> I tried for that one. Bit of a stretch, but we'll see. Just a little bit. Ezreal is powering through this Baron as we see it already down to half health. The remaining four members of Black Lotus are going to be looking for a contest on this, but their oh, support God. is down, and their 80 carry default. No, the shields come through, and the True Shot Barrage is not in time. The Irelia does not come through, but the Vanguard's Edge is able to come through and get a nice chunk of damage onto the J4. They are chasing them down. Oh. A beautiful flash forward from Slayer, and a double kill to come through for the side of the Irelia. Main is being routed and chased, but it doesn't look like Odo cares. They are so heading straight back for the Baron, straight back to their win condition, which is take the Baron, push up to the mid, take mid in hip, turn this into an ARAM, and absolutely spend the rest of our time pounding our namesake into the backside of Black Lotus. Yeah. Again, YYC ADC showing them the, showing the damage numbers as, look at this Aurelia just going to town on the base, turning it around on this Nautilus. And Nautilus can... does drop the jet charge, but it's too little too late, potentially. We do see the stun go wide from the side of Aurelia. She's forced to drop away, as, flash away as Vayne goes onto her ultimate and is trying to chase her down, but does not get enough. The True Shot Barrage just barely clipping her and not able to get the kill. But that was a very close turnaround. Aurelia sitting at 8-1 with a 700 gold bounty would have been very nice for this vein to cash in. Oof, man, that was a little too close. A little bit butt puckering for both, both, sides, of, both sides here. Now, Vayne. we say that would have been good, but we have to remind everyone. 34,000 to 49,000. True. There's not a whole lot Black Lotus can do minus getting picks. Black Lotus, I feel like Black Lotus needs a full team wipe at this point. They need several full team wipes. They need a full team wipe followed by several towers, followed by, like, something. Couple of dragons? Couple of dragons, as we do see the second Infernal pop through for Ono. Oh <laughs> so two Infernal Drakes every single game. We didn't see it get taken, but two Infernal Drags were taken every single game. First and second. Oh, first and second, too. Yeah. Dang. Every single time. Every day it's Infernal. Mm. I tried for it, but anyways. We see Ono pushing down the base of Black Lotus. Not too surprising, given that they have the Baron buff now and a massive gold lead. Sejuani just Ooh. playing front line. As Good she question. doesn't care, Kaisa drops all the missiles on top of her head, and she just goes, eh, they weren't even heat seeking. We see a beautiful terrible. blizzard followed through by the uh, Lucid Singularity and the final spark as Aurelia goes immediately diving into the line. J4 is able to get a cataclysm to trade back onto the Aurelia. She is shut down as four members immediately go down for the side of YYC ADC. A double kill followed by a... Follow-up kill from Rise onto the Kaisa to absolutely put their stamp of authority, the final hurrah, the win condition, etc., etc. I'm running out of words. This game Rise. is over. He wants, they want it all. They Damn. want the ace. They want the nexus. They want the minions. They want to stand there and look tall over top of Black Lotus, taking down the final game and a victory for Ono. Just a little bit down. Wow! Three for three. So we had two Infernal Dragons, back to back, Dragon 1, Dragon 2, were Infernal every single game. That's cool. Oh no, Masters Overrated and Wedge. Damn. Laying the smack down. They went, oh, wait, we actually have well, to we Masters have to win. Masters Overrated, we're, we were kind of expecting We were kind of expecting that, but the other two teams were like, oh wait, we have to win? We have to win to get into the uh, the best four? Oh, oh, okay. Well, we're just going to go ham town and stomp. Let me just put, you know, the foot to the floor, turn on the radio to the initial D setting. Bang and it. Go. That was pretty fun. Yeah. That, that was, was really fun. That was an entertaining <laughs> set of matches. And I have to give it to you. That's unprecedented. Triple. Double Infernal Dragons every single game. Have we ever had that happen? I haven't seen that happen. No. That's some RNG, dude. That's some RNG, guys. Like, good on ya. I would love to be blessed by that RNG, please. Please. Right. Riddle. Riddle. Listen. <laughs> so, both of us.
Would love some of that RNG. Absolutely, we would. We're going to be playing some League after this, but uh, for now, we're going to be signing off. As always, it has been your host, Drew Trackoff Crawford, joined at the desk by JoJo Barrientos, a.k.a. JB Red Phoenix, in the chat. We're going to be doing that every single time. Hopefully, you guys have had a fun night. I know we have. This is CEL Championship Series, signing off. See you next week.